Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Quest for Faith with Brian. And today we're going to be talking about the weirdest, but kind of cool thing that the Catholic Church teaches. And we're going to dive into relics. So if before we get started, please like, share, and subscribe. And bear with me. So if you're a Protestant, and I know everyone's probably heard of relics, but they're weird. I, I I have to admit it. I still, even though I think they're cool, and I'll go into my experience with relics here in a minute. Um, but it's still kind of weird. And so let, let's dive into it. So first off, what is a relic? All right. So relic is a physical object the associated with the saint or an event from the life of Christ. Right. So it could be a body part. It could be a piece of clothing they owned. It could be uh, something they touched. Um, it could be a part of the cross. So there is uh, slivers and pieces of the true cross of Christ um, that different Catholic churches have. And, and every single Catholic church out there has relics in it. It's not like it's some, um, or it's just in the, um, uh, it's in the basilicas in Rome, or it's you know, it's literally every church. So most of the time, when they're dedicated new uh, um, altar in the church, they'll actually seal relics inside of them for dedication. And so this goes all the way back to the beginning of first century Christians when they would have to go down in the catacombs and they would bring the dead down there. And they would pray mass around the dead. And so that's where that, that started from. But I think it's really kind of crazy because, you know, you, you, it's just weird. So for instance, I recently uh, just got to go see the arm of St. Jude, the apostle Jude. So uh, it was really cool. And I'll put a picture of it right there. Um, and it was pretty cool to go see it. Um, there was a long line of people coming out to see it, and you stood in line. It took me about an hour to get through, and I could spend 10 seconds in front of this relic. And if you touched anything to the glass, it would become a third-class relic. So what is a, what is what do, you, what do I mean by third-class relic? Well, there's actually three different levels of relics. So it's not like everything is a, is a relic, but there's three different classes. So the first class is typically a body part or hair. It is a saint. Okay. Um, a second class relic is an item, item owned or used by a saint during their life. And a third class relic is an object that has touched the first class relic. So for instance, on my rosary here, my other rosary, so uh, I got a St. Jude medal that I touched up against that glass when I went. And so this is technically a third-class relic. My uh, first rosary I ever got, it's not this one, uh, literally the day after that I got it blessed and it's a third-class relic now, the crucifix fell off of it. So I have to fix it. But... Um, so anything that touches a first class relic can then become a third class relic. And so there's definitely different levels of this. So, but how do I know if this relic's real or not? Right? Like, is there a bunch of frauds out there? And I've, and I've heard that claim before, before I was even a Catholic that, yeah, most of these relics are frauds. Um, nobody, uh, th these are all made up. But actually, the Catholic Church is really hesitant to call something a first-class relic unless they know for sure it is. And they keep pretty decent records on all of this stuff. And one of the interesting things in canon law, when you're talking about re uh, uh, regulation of relics, it's actually 100% forbidden to sell relics. 100% forbidden. So, for instance, I... Not only did this one uh, St. Jude medal, I uh, blessed a, a bunch of them to give to uh, my boys, my wife, 
um, and then some family, uh, some uh, some close friends of ours. And if I would have sold it to my close friends, that would have been a mortal sin. It would have been 100% forbidden by canon law. So any relic can only be given away. It cannot be uh, sold. So, but even there's really strong regulations around if it's a first class relic, because the church isn't just going to let anyone give anything to any, you know, like it, they want to make sure that the relics are going to be taken care of. And so when you're talking a first class or second class relic, that's a really high um, valued item and has been in the care of the church for a very long time, they want to make sure that it's still going to be taken care of. And so the canon law does spell out that it, even though it is per, forbidden, prohibitive against selling any sacred uh, relics, um, and, and it's ex, it's explicitly forbidden. So it's nothing nothing to shake a stick at there. But a, certain relics do have to actually be approved to be given away by the uh, app, by Rome. So it kind of just depends on on what the relic is. Um, but but the church definitely definitely uh regulates this so now the like i said it's one of those things that's weirdly awesome with the catholic church because you can go into any catholic church and they're gonna have relics there they might have not have them on display or anything like that some churches do others don't um but where where do relics show up in the Bible? That's kind of my first question, right? I mean, me growing up uh, a, a Protestant in Church of Christ, like I'm always going first to the Bible. And we're, you know, that that's just ridiculous. The Catholics are worshiping just objects and bones of people. That doesn't make any sense. Um, and you know what? There's a number of different re references to relics within the within the, the scripture one of the first ones and i was actually shocked to find this because i totally forgot about this story but in second kings chapter 13 uh verses uh chapter 13 verses 20 through 21 uh it says so elijah died and they buried him now bands of, of moabites used to uh used to invade the land in the spring of each year and as a man was being buried uh and one of the marauding bands was seen was seen and the man was cast into the grave of Elijah. So he was dead. They threw him in the grave of Elijah. And as soon as the man touched the bones of Elijah, he was revised and stood on his feet. So that's a crazy thing. And then even furthermore, in, in the New Testament, if you want to go New Testament and you're going to go, oh, well, in Acts, you know, or in in that's the old Testament, you know, God parted the seas and did stuff there. Um, what about the new Testament? Well, in acts, there's, there's stories in acts chapter 19 verses 11 through 12, where a handkerchief or, or apron, uh, touched by St. Paul was used to heal the sick. And the fact that people used to line up on the streets uh, that were sick in hopes that, uh, St. Peter's shadow would cross over them and heal them. That's a crazy story. So there's a lot of examples of this in the Bible. I'm not saying a ton, but there's examples of relics. So the, the handkerchief or scarf would be a second class re relic where Elijah's bones would be a first class relic. Um, but what about first century church, right? Was there anything in there um, that would make you think that this was always the practice of Christians. And when Polycarp died, um, you can read about this. And in, uh, in, so this was written in 156 AD after Polycarp died. And it says, we took up his bones, which were more valuable than precious stones and finer than refined gold and laid them in a suitable place where the Lord will permit us to gather ourselves together as we are able in gladness and joy and to celebrate the birthday of his martyrdom. So even in the first century, we're talking in the one fifties, uh, Christians were already 
collecting the bones and uh, the bodies of the dead of the, of dead saints and and preserving them and even jerome which you know if y'all don't know who jerome is saint jerome is the dude that actually uh translated the bible from hebrew and greek into latin which the latin vulgate which literally means common tongue so they the church was tasked him who was an excellent scholar in uh, hebrew uh and greek to translate the bible into the common language of latin and jerome said we do not worship we do not adore for fear that we should bow down to the creator the creature rather than the creator but we venerate the relics of the martyrs in order to better adore adore him whose martyrs they are i thought that was a pretty cool statement um and so that was in the third century a quote from jerome there or fourth century in the 300 late 300s a quote from jerome uh, jerome so you can see use of relics early on in christianity you see it in the bible and i know there's still people that are gonna just say oh what are you talking about this is so weird but it's all about respect and honor it's not about we're, we're not worshiping and i know a lot of a lot of non-catholics think that we worship statues we worship merit we don't okay the only people that the only person that we worship is jesus christ and god right the holy trinity is the only thing we worship but we're taught to venerate these relics and there's been countless stories like in the like in in second kings there with elijah where people have been healed by touching a first class relic or a second class relic and there's been countless witnesses of miraculous miracles happening through relics and you know some of them might seem far-fetched but at the end of the day if god wants to use the bones of a saint the bones of a great man or woman um or a piece of cloth that they owned to further glorify him in his kingdom what am i to say to, to argue against that and so i think relics still weird super cool and i'll say that my experience going uh going to see the arm of, of saint jude the apostle jude it was interesting um because when you got in front of it and you could literally see the bone right like so here's the picture I'll, I'll go ahead and put it up um i was kind of awed like wow this is an apostle's bone like this bone was probably grasped by jesus in a handshake or a hug like to think about it like that is just incredible um so i was really i felt really lucky to be able to go and see that and i know the arm of saint jude is going to be traveling uh the apostle jude is going to be traveling all throughout the united states here this year so if you if it's coming anywhere near uh uh anywhere near you're at at a local parish go check it out totally worth it so that's relics they're highly regulated by the catholic church you can't sell them and there's three classes there of, of relics so i hope this was informative i hope this really helped you out if you were questioning what are relics and why do catholics have them that's super weird kind of is but it's also kind of cool that's that's kind of my view on it right so anyways i uh, please like share and subscribe and i'll talk to you all later have a good one